Welcome to Titans of Terror, where we look at the men and women who have shaped the horror landscape. Today's victim, or subject, special effects makeup artist, Rob Bottin. Robin R. Bottin was born on April 1st, 1959 in El Monte, California. From an early age, Rob enjoyed a steady stream of old horror films, as well as magazines like Famous Monsters of Filmland. At age 14, he submitted a series of illustrations to well-known special makeup effects artist Rick Baker, who promptly hired him. He worked with Baker on various films, such as 1976's Squirm and King Kong. In 1977, Rob completed the sculpt of Pond's Olympics mask in the original Star Wars film, after Rick Baker made a rough start on it. Rob even got to portray the tallest Bith member of Figrandan and the Modal Nodes. The same year, Rob also assisted on makeup duties on The Incredible Melting Man, while also playing the lead's double in a few scenes. Rob's first official job came in 1978 when he did special makeup effects on Piranha, where he used the cast of his own head to create one of the many victims of the titular fish. In 1979, Rob created and performed the giant mouse creature in the Ramones film, Rock and Roll High School. For his next film, Rob created the creatures in the Roger Corman-produced Humanoids from the Deep, complete with an alien chestburster scene. After asking cinematographer Dean Cundy to introduce him to director John Carpenter, Rob was hired by Carpenter to create the special makeup effects for his 1980 film, The Fog, in which he also portrayed the main villain, Captain Blake. Also in 1980, Rob built a Rick Baker-designed gorilla suit for the fantasy film Tanya's Island. 1981 brought Rob much acclaim as he worked on the -the state-of-the-art makeup effects for The Howling. Rob created the werewolf transformation scenes with his most celebrated effect being the on-screen transformation of Eddie Quist, which involved air bladders under latex facial applications to give the illusion of transformation. Rob was also an associate producer on the film, which was released five months before An American Werewolf in London, with creature effects from his mentor, Rick Baker. Rob followed the howling up with a film he's probably best known for today, John Carpenter's The Thing, from 1982. One and a half million U.S. dollars was spent on Rob's creature effects, a mixture of chemicals, food products, rubber, and mechanical parts, turned into an alien capable of taking on any form. Carpenter conceived the thing as a single creature, but Rob suggested that it should be constantly changing and be able to look like anything. At its peak, Rob had a 35-person crew of artists and technicians working on the film. He found it difficult to work with so many people. However, during filming, the 21-year-old Rob was hospitalized for exhaustion, double pneumonia, and a bleeding ulcer caused by his extensive workload. He himself explained he would hoard the work, opting to be directly involved in many of the complicated tasks. His dedication to the project saw him spend over a year living on the Universal lot, claiming he did not take a day off during that time and slept on the sets or in locker rooms. The thing has many amazing effects, including the chest chomp scene, in which a man's chest transforms into a large mouth that severs another man's arms. Rob accomplished this scene by recruiting a double amputee and fitted him with prosthetic arms filled with wax bones, rubber veins, and jello. The arms were then placed into the practical stomach mouth with the mechanical jaws clamped down on them, at which point the actor pulled away, severing the false arms. There's another well-known scene involving an effect of a head detaching from its body. The scene involved a fire effect in which the crew were unaware that fumes from the rubber foam chemicals inside the puppet were flammable. The fire ignited the fumes, created a large fireball that engulfed the puppet. In it had a uh, a hydraulic ram that would actually stretch the neck out and sever the rubber at exactly a perfect point. And again, this was only like, you could only do it in one take. All right, and when it, when it stretches open and the skin rips, what I wanted to see inside was something that was very reminiscent of like what's in a comic book whenever you see goo stretching or whatever, it's like really stringy stuff. 
So we really didn't know how to make that stuff, <laughs> you know, and there was nothing that would sort of stretch that far. So what we did was we just started, you know, melting plastic and, and getting bubble gum, you know, and making this crazy concoction that I'm sure was like so toxic, you know, it, was, it couldn't be good for you, right? And what we did is we, right before the shot, you know, we had, you know, the whole replica of, of Hallahan's body. And we actually had this, this goo that we would pile in there really quick. And, and the whole time it's giving off fumes like paint thinner and lacquer thinner and all this kind of stuff. And again, we have effects guys buried in the little table underneath to operate the stuff. And then all these guys that have rehearsed the motion of the neck coming off and everything without doing the split. Camera set up, right? And everybody's going like, what's that smell? You know? And I'm going, oh, it's the, you know, it's the stuff inside the neck. You know, just some nutty concoction we made that'll stretch, you know, bubble gum and whatnot, plastic melted down. They're going like, oh, it doesn't smell too good, you know. So I go, well, we better hurry up and shoot it, right? So the camera said everything's ready, and then Carpenter goes, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Shouldn't there be fire, uh, you know, like underneath the, the lens here? And, you know, and everybody goes, well, why? And he goes, well, because they're burning, they're burning everything around them. And this is the shot where the, you know, like the, you know, the head's stretching off, but nobody's seeing it. So just for continuity, want a little fire in the, in the foreground, you know, Meantime, nobody's thinking about it, and I didn't either, but the room is filling up with, uh, you know, explosive fumes, right? So, so uh, uh, finally, you know, the effects guy gets a fire. You know, there's like a thing called a fire bar, which is basically a pipe with a bunch of little holes drilled in it, much like, a, you know, you would have in a fireplace that works with gas. Puts it underneath the lens out of sight. And, you know, John says, okay, everybody set, ready to go? You know, I go, ready, all, all the guys ready, everybody's ready, thumbs up. Hey, you in there, I'm knocking on the little, you know, box. You know, you guys, you know, you ready in there? Ready. You know, like that, okay, great. You know, so John says, roll camera. Right, so they roll camera. All right, and he goes, all right, light the fire bar. Guy turns on the gas. Psh, you know, stuff's coming out. And the guy's up there with a, with a you know, like a, a, a lighter, you know, and he's, psh, psh, and finally, it ignites, right? And the whole effect, the whole Hallahan, you know, replica body explodes, right? The whole room goes into this huge fireball with the whole crew sitting in it, right? Because this is a small set. And when the fire clears, everybody's sitting there like in a cartoon, you know, with their faces black, but, you know, nobody had black faces, but they were all going, you like this, and I'm staring down at the at the body, and I'm in shock because since it's a one take deal only, I look down at it and I go, "Oh my God, it's on fire!" Right? It's on fire! And then John says, "Don't just stand there, put it out, you idiot!" You know, like that. And then and then you know, I was just so shocked that months of work preparing for this moment was just blown to bits in, in just a second. So. We, you know, put it out with fire extinguishers and stuff like that. And, and then he just goes, oh, my God. We had to set up, take a whole other day to get back to this point and finally just accomplish the one shot where the head stretches and, and the neck out. To lessen his load, Rob hired effects guru Stan Winston to work on the infamous dog thing scene. The film's special effects were simultaneously lauded and lambasted for being technically brilliant, but visually repulsive and excessive. The film has been retroactively reassessed as a, quote-unquote, a peerless masterpiece of relentless suspense, retina-wrecking visual excess and outright nihilistic terror. The next year, Rob designed and did the makeup on the third segment of 1983's Twilight Zone, the movie. Director Joe Dante wanted something creepy, but not disgusting. So Rob was inspired by the Rocky and Bullwinkle segments, with Bullwinkle trying to pull a rabbit out of his hat but ended up with a carnivorous animal for the rabbit monster scene. 1985 was another banner year for Rob, as he did the special makeup effects on the family-friendly sci-fi film Explorers, directed once again by Joe Dante. Next up, director Ridley Scott hired Rob to work on the dark fantasy epic Legend. Rob and his team came up with a complicated prosthetic makeups that would be worn for up to 60 days, with some being full-body prosthetics. All of the principal actors, minus two, spent hours in the makeup chairs every morning, with three makeup artists assigned to each actor. Tim Curry's character, Darkness, is considered to be one of the most iconic images in fantasy cinema. This film also brought Rob his first Academy Award nomination for Best Makeup. 
Rob then returned to work for Joe Dante on an episode of Amazing Stories entitled The Gribble or The Gribble about a giant floppy furry creature that eats inanimate objects. In 1987, Rob created and designed the makeup effects for both the supernatural comedy The Witches of Eastwick and the sci-fi comedy Inner Space. Rob was then hired to lead the special effects team on RoboCop, creating the practical effects, the violent gore, and the RoboCop costume itself. The costume took six months to build with flexible foam latex, semi and completely rigid polyurethane, and a fiberglass helmet. Seven costumes were made in total, including a fireproof version and costumes depicting sustained damage. Rob received two Saturn Awards for the film, Best Makeup and Best Special Effects. 1990 would bring Rob to work on the character visual effects on Total Recall, a sci-fi film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Partial animatronics were created for the facial contortions and deformation of unprotected exposure to the Martian atmosphere. Rob also designed numerous mutant makeups, the Johnny Cab robot, and the unforgettable splitting woman's head. The film ultimately won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. That same year, Rob also returned to produce a new suit for RoboCop 2. Rob continued working on such films as Bugsy, Basic Instinct, and RoboCop 3. Rob then received a Special Achievement Academy Award at the 1991 Academy Awards. In 1995, Rob provided special makeup effects for the crime thriller 7. He researched crime scene photographs and police evidence files observed an autopsy, and studied the effects of obesity to realize his designs. The next year, Rob would work on special effects makeup on the Mission Impossible movie with Tom Cruise. In 1997, Rob designed the creatures for Guillermo del Toro's Mimic and was the visual effects consultant on The Devil's Advocate. In 1998, Rob went full scream ahead as he designed the creature and did the special effects makeup for the action horror film Deep Rising. He also designed the lounge lizards and the demon makeup effects on Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. In 1999, Rob became special makeup effects supervisor on Fight Club, employing all of the beat-up looks in the film. He also worked on 2000's Charlie's Angels and 2002's Mr. Deeds. Rob also created the special animatronic cow and bull effects for 2002's Serving Sarah. He abruptly retired in 2002 when he just wasn't getting work in the horror and action films he desired due to the film industry's increasing reliance on CGI over practical effects. However, Rob returned in 2014 to work on the Game of Thrones episode, The Lion and the Rose, in which he worked uncredited on the makeup effects on Joffrey's death scene. Special effects genius, makeup effects extraordinaire, Rob Bottin is a true titan of terror. <laughs>